Okay, in this video I'm going to review our material covering analysis of variance in a little bit different way to give you a visualization of how this works. So to the right here we have the overheads, the things that we've talked about before, showing you the source table and how we partition or break up the variance. So these circles here for each of these designs on the left here represent the total variance. And so what we're going to do is we're going to partition the variance, right? We're going to break it up. So like for the one-way uh, analysis of variance, we have two sources of variance. In effect, we have a source of variance, which is due to our independent variable, right? And then the rest of it is error variance, residual variance, error variance, what have you. That is our sources of variance for that particular design. For the repeated measures, we still have a source of variability due to our independent variable, and that will be the same, right? Uh, what's different though, or what's new, is that we can, because each of the people in our study were tested multiple times, we can form subject variability. And so we can calculate this subject variability, and I'm just going to abbreviate here. So that's the subject variability. And what that does is the rest of this is our unexplained or error variance. But as you can see, compared to the one-way ANOVA, all other factors being equal, we can now account for more of the variability so it makes our error term smaller. And that's how the F ratio grows for repeated measures analysis variance because we can account for more. We can remove some variability that is the subject variability that we can quantify because they've been tested uh, repeatedly across conditions. The factorial design also has source of variability due to uh, our independent variable. But now we have two or more independent variables. We're just considering the situation. Oh, let me scroll down. We're just considering the situation where we have uh, two IVs. So we're going to have a source of variability for our first IV, source of variability for our second IV. We're going to call that B. Now, what also is new is we're going to get a source of variability which is due to our interaction, right? The A by B interaction here. And then, of course, the rest is our residual or our error uh, variance, the stuff that we cannot explain. And so that's the way the factorial design, uh, that's the way it looks, right? The repeated measures factorial is very similar to the factorial design. So I'm going to copy and paste this down here so that we can sort of edit that, edit it. So we still have a source of variability due to, due to both of our independent variables, the main effects, right, and the interaction. Again, what's special about the repeated measures is now we have subject variability, right? And if we calculate the subject variability, it's going to decrease, it's going to explain a little bit more, decrease our error term. And so all other factors being equal, the repeated measures factorial has less error than the factorial design that boosts the F ratio, right? Now, the last scenario, the mixed factorial, is a little unique because it's a hybrid design, right? It has uh, IV, one IV is between subjects, at least one IV is within subjects. So let's consider the simplest case where we have one IV is between and one IV is within. So we're going to have a source of variability due to our IV, right? The first IV, second main effect, right? And uh, we'll also have our interaction, just like a factorial design. The difference is for the A variable, this one is the between subjects IV, our error term has subject variability included. So it's the larger error term because they're different groups of subjects we can't estimate subject variability. So all of that remaining is error. When we're looking at our within subjects IV though, the B variable, we can now, because it's a repeated measures IV, calculate our subject variability, just like we did with the other designs. And that will make the error term smaller, right? We count for more of the variance, makes the error term smaller, and it boosts our F ratio. And you can use that for both the B and the interaction that uses the smaller error term. And so that's what's happening. Hopefully these 
pictures, which I also do in class. Hopefully these pictures will um, help reinforce those concepts that we talked about, give you a different visual uh, for this particular, for this particular um, situation.